it seems like pretty girls trigger everyone in a in one way or another on one side of the spectrum or another whether that's you trigger their emotions you trigger their insecurities you trigger their senses whatever it may be you are noticeable to people to the point where it affects how they feel whether it's a positive or a negative feeling but that's just something i am starting to notice even as far as family members you trigger your family members you make it awkward like if you have one of those moms that is insecure around like when her daughter is growing up and starting to become attractive and she's insecure herself so she doesn't want you to get close to her to your father there's a lot of pretty girls that actually go through this i am one of them as cringy as that sounds it's an actual thing studies have shown that if children stare at you then more you're more than likely an attractive person so you trigger children as well but that's just what beauty does in general beauty is attractive beauty is feminine uh feminine energy is attractive energy if you ever go for a walk and you see like a field of roses if as even the thing roses or dandelions or whatever kind of flower that you like you're going to stop and just look at it and see how pretty it is it's going to capture your eye attractive women are just a human form of beauty and a lot of beauty has to do with symmetry and your features and how they are aligned and all that stuff that's more you know natural beauty and everything but you know you can also you can if you're a less attractive person like your facial symmetry may not be as even you can alter you can do things to make yourself attractive like there's so many plastic surgeries and i am pro enhancements so i believe that you can or should do whatever you want with your body because it's your body just assume all risk when doing anything obviously but we live in a society now where we can't even tell what's real and what's fake at all even as far down as ai like it's what but i mean you can't tell male from female half the time you can't tell if somebody has a natural hair or fake hair i mean that, this is the society we live in now where you know people just judge off of physical appearances and to level up in this society unfortunately as materialistic as it sounds and i hate it too i really do hate materialistic but it just seems like in this society that's the only way to level up socially is part of it is your aesthetic and how you look and how you appear to people and yes there is a thing as natural beauty but you know enhancements just always you know you all it's just like if you're pretty naturally when you put enhancements on it's just like what but everybody likes well not everybody most people like natural beauty in theory <laughs> because you know that's what we should be and like and you know that's what it should be but it's just not because we I don't know if it's peer pressure whatever it is to cuz even myself I've been natural multiple times and I'm back to a relaxer and clip-ins and I try to make the clip-ins match you know look as natural as possible cuz I don't like the whole fake hair looking thing I like to make my hair blend in with my real hair just make my hair look I have some length that's all I like to do you know and when i put makeup on it i literally only put concealer under my eyelids and around like my upper lip area i put concealer on that area cuz 
I have like a little dark area right there. It's like I, I, that's the only, that's one of the only parts of my face that I don't like is that area where it looks like it's a mustache. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't know if what it is. I think it's just melanin from me. I don't know what it's from, but I don't I don't like it. But I put concealer on that and my uh, under my eyelids, and that's it. And I wear honey colored contacts, brown light brown colored contacts. And that's really it. And I still look the same when I take it off. It's just, it's more enhanced when I put stuff on. I don't like to do too much. Like, I don't think I'm ever be that person. I guess the BBL and all that, the big, the boob surgery. I don't even need the boob surgery. I think my boobs are big enough. But I ain't into all the BBLs and the white full sections and but if that's your thing do you um botox all that do you but it's just not my thing i just i have to keep it cute and simple i like to i like to enhance myself more naturally like with supplements so i notice supplements when i take them and i take a, a certain amount of i'll put that i'll put the vitamins in that i take in my next video but because of the vitamins that I take, my skin is smooth and even and youthful looking and healthy looking. So I really don't have to worry about Botox. I still look like I'm 18, even though I'm 32. So I don't have to really worry about that right now. And when it comes to wrinkles, the way I wash my face, I don't really worry about that because when you're washing your face, when you're cleansing your face, you're not supposed to, like when you're rubbing your face in a circular motion around your eyelids, you're supposed to go, uh, is it? You're supposed to rub your, um, your, in a, like a downward motion, like a circular downward motion. I'll try to find a video example of that. But it helps decrease your wrinkles in that area because you're not pushing your skin upward, you're just pushing it downward. I'll probably do another video about beauty tips and because being beautiful is not for the lazy. It really isn't. Like right now, my nails are looking crazy. I need to get my nails done, but you know. It's just a lot going on right now, and it's just like, I have to maintain my nails. It's just little stuff that adds up. You start to run out of collagen, you start to run out of things. You gotta go get it, if you, you know. It takes money to be pretty, it takes time to be pretty. My eyebrows about to do for a, a, a waxing, my hair needs to get done. But I'm just so behind on certain things that I have to prioritize certain things. And, you know, you just, I have to figure out how to get back on track. Because you have to, it's a daily, it's a lifestyle. Being beautiful, let's just say it like that. It's a lifestyle. So if you don't keep it up, you know, if you want to be a 10, a bad bitch, you got it. It's a lifestyle. It really, it literally is. Or you could be basic Betty, which is fine. I mean, there's nothing wrong with basic Betty, but I want to be a 10. I want to be a bad bitch, so I have a lifestyle I have to keep up and maintain, and it is what it is. Because, you know, the perks that come with being a 10, a bad bitch, you know, pretty girls, beautiful women, what comes with that, you know, is there's privileges with that, but you, in mind, keep in mind with privileges, with extreme privileges comes extreme opposite reactions of people, which is, you know, going back to the topic of the conversation, how we trigger people, and that just causes, when you trigger people's emotions, they make it, make it especially if you trigger an insecurity in somebody, it's almost like they can't even help how they react, whether however they react. 
however they choose to react whether that's in their facial features what they say how they move with you you know we get treated like crap when it comes to insecure people we almost can't even be around insecure people and let them be with their men it's oh it's just terrible i literally can't make any female friends even at work environments like you you'll have a boss i have a boss i have two female bosses right now that are just giving me bullshit jobs and i know it's on purpose because they're the only ones that do it they're the only two that give me bullshit jobs then everybody else don't and when i say everybody else guess what everybody else is men the men don't give me the bullshit jobs. They give me fairy jobs. The jobs that, you know, the jobs that everybody else gets. But, like, the task, I mean, like, there's certain tasks that are, well, you know, you know when you're in a job, when you're getting bullshit assignments versus, you know what I'm saying? And it's only with the two female managers that, give me this bullshit jobs and I'm not supposed to think anything out of it okay but it's I don't know if I'm just tripping it's just a coincidence I just know anytime I'm dealing with females I always have to keep my guard up I'm just so used to doing that I almost expect pettiness at this point because it's been my whole life like I really be trying to make female friends especially black women because I can relate more to black women because I'm mostly black. I'm, I'm all black. I'm about 90% black. 90% black, 10%, I think 10, 8% native and 2% white or something like that to be exact. But my phenotype I guess I am not black enough, so I don't fit in. I'm not hood enough, maybe. That could be another reason. I, and that's another thing I've noticed. Like I don't get along with black people who are monocultural, only multicultural. And I, I just noticed this. The girls that don't give me a hard time at work, which is off the top of my head two girls i noticed one thing about one of them one of them is from africa so she's a foreigner and i always get along with africans and foreigners i've always had um and then the other girl i can tell she grew up around white people and stuff too but whenever it comes to like the hood girls in my job those are the ones that are clicking up against me those are the ones that are you know, acting all shady and hot and cold with me and stuff like that. But it's all good. It's like I notice it. I'm I notice it enough to you know, it's it's not in my head. And I'm tired of keep saying that stuff's in my head when it's odd. when it's not in my head. The only reason why they're saying anything is because they have no reason to say anything because I didn't do anything to them. They just don't like me and they know why they don't like me. They just can't say why they don't like me. Because it's a it's a petty reason. A very petty reason. The men love me in the job, mind you. But the females, they act weird, hot and cold, wishy washy, fake love, fake energy, fake clothes. And it's just you can tell somebody's being fake. You can tell. The men are just obsessed with me, so they won't ever leave me alone. I had one of my coworkers, and I always give him a hug in the morning because me and him are real cool. He gave me a hug one like last week, just out the blue. And I was like, what you doing? You leaving early or something? I was like, why are you giving me a hug? And he was telling me because he was with somebody one of our other co-workers and he was saying like oh such and such is jealous because i give you hugs every morning and he don't i'm like in my head what the fuck he's jealous because i give you a hug i oh my god y'all stop y'all need to stop now it's getting ridiculous he's like this man is mad at or not mad but he feels some type of way 
they would like they had a whole conversation in private about this enough for it to be something that he feels some type of way about and he had to come up to me and prove to the guy that it's okay to hug me because i'm a nice person because he was trying to show him that see she's a nice person look i give her a hug and i was like y'all i give hugs to people who i just connect closer with than others that's i mean i'm just a hugger i'm a hugger I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a really affectionate person. I'm really affectionate. So, yeah, I guess people just get jealous when I hug certain people. I noticed this was this other guy as well, and I think he has a crush on me. Because anytime I'm talking to another male coworker, he feels some type of way because his energy, which, like, he'll, I'll notice, I'll give somebody a hug that I'm close with one of the guys because of course it's a guy because I don't get along with the females I only get along with two of the females in this whole building and that's because I feel like I'm multicultural but but I noticed this one guy that I think likes me whenever I would hug somebody and he I saw him around and he saw me hug this person the next time I see this guy He's not even going to look my way, mind you. Prior to that, he every single time we pass each other's path, which could be five minutes within the same time frame, because I have a job where we move in around the building a lot. And every single time we pass each other, he gives me like the biggest smile and speaks and does some type of flirtatious gesture or whatever. So... But whenever I give another male coworker a hug, I notice those gestures stop. <laughs> so it's like I, I heard I seems to hurt his feelings or something. I don't know if he thinks he owns me or something, but you know, I'm not dating you. But you can I, you know what I you can tell when people's energy changes with you. And it'll take him like two or three days to speak to me again, I promise. It's one of those unspoken things with him, like you can just like, it's weird. I don't know. <laughs> but I trigger my mom's emotions. Y'all already know about that. I trigger... I, it just it seems like I trigger everybody in one way, form, or fashion. It, can, it, just, it can't just be a normal situation. I went to a birthday party yesterday, and it was a majority black party. And there was a lot of unambiguous black men there and (laughs) y'all like I don't like I don't like being stared at like that first of all I'm an introvert and I'm I have social anxiety so I'm not really like I don't want to be like this but I just am and so it kind of makes me feel some type of way when people stare at me and every time I looked up this it was more than one dude that just would not stop looking at me. One guy with, in a red shirt kept following me around the whole room or whatever because it was like a multi-purpose room and there was different things to do around the area, the, the multi-purpose room, right? And every time I would turn around or look, there he is just staring at me and walk behind, like around me. And then I would notice this was somebody else. And this other person was with his girl. And was, I just saw him slowly creeping from the back of the crowd towards all of a sudden, minutes later, he's right beside me. Like he kind of, he kind of did it on some slick shit, like trying to get closer and closer. And then he <laughs> eventually said, How you enjoying the party or whatever. And I just, but yeah, people get weird. People get really weird with us. I don't know how many stalkers I've had. I've had this one white boy. I dated him for two days and I couldn't do it anymore because he was just too country for me. And, you know, I let him go nicely and he wouldn't let it go. And he was stalking me for day, like days. I made the mistake of inviting him over to my house. 
so we could watch movies. And then I, you know, break up with him. This was a couple years ago. And he would stop coming to my house. And then he would follow me to work. Like, yeah, I had so many stalkers. I had to tell one old man stalker at my job to chill because he was buying me things. And he was bringing presents for me in the workplace. I've had dudes fight over me throughout my life multiple times. I've ended relationships and friendships, not even on purpose, not even intentionally, not even wanting to. It just happened because of, because dudes just catch feelings for me so quick and easily. I be having dudes sprung and in love all the time. Like every time I, I remember in college when I was, I had this period, maybe three, four months I was single and I was dating. And um, I just remember every time I would be with the guy and I would take him away from his friend group, his crew, and his friends would make jokes with him and talk about, Oh, uh, you sprung, huh? Anytime he would be with me because he would slowly stop hanging with them and he would hang with me. And his friends would just, and this was what one guy I could remember particularly. Like his friends were picking on him. He was like, Oh, you sprung, aren't you? I've had so many people sprung on me, it's crazy. I've. I have broken up a friendship because both of them liked me and they had gotten a fight over me. If you're a beautiful woman and you're dating a guy, he gets very emotional with you in different ways. He gets very possessive over you, very um, territorial of you. And if you make him feel any type of way, he is going to try to humble the shit out of you. Whether he's doing it intentionally or not, or subconsciously or not, I meant. They have a tendency to do that. And they'll aim for your looks a lot of the times or somewhere in the looks department. Or they'll try to humble you with another beautiful woman. But they'll try to humble you. I don't know if all girls go through humbling tactics with men and men overly possessive of you and showing you off to the homeboys or all kinds of craziness that are desperate for a man but I just want a break from a man to be quite honest with you like I'm so tired of men that's why I'm learning how to decenter them and get my power back I'm in a relationship right now, and I've tried to break up with this guy at least 1,200 times, but we're still together, and part of that is me being weak and not standing up for what I really want, and maybe I just want to be single for a little bit, So I haven't been single since 8th grade, like, single for longer than 6 months since 8th grade, so, and that's when I hit puberty, so I've pretty much never been fully single longer than a year. So I'm tired of men. I'm not tired of men, tired of men. I just need a break from men right now because I notice my feminine side pops a lot more when I am, you know, single. But when I'm with a man, I notice my femininity, like like all of a sudden, for example, like right now, my car is dirty because my boyfriend doesn't know how to clean up behind himself and you kind of pick up on their habits when you don't mean to i'm naturally clean and this car is driving me crazy right now so i'm about to go clean it and it's just stuff like that the the toilet seat is always up and i'm so sick of that you know when i live by myself i don't have to worry about that if i lived by myself even if I lived by myself, if he had his own place and we were together, that would be even, that would be perfect. But we live together, so I, 
you know, I have to live with his habits as well. Like, it's, it drives me crazy. My house would be so much cleaner and more decorative of my expression and how I, I don't know if that's selfish or what, but I just, I've never had anything, I never, like, I've never had my own place where I could just decorate it for me. I always had to share my space with somebody. So when you're single, you don't have to deal with a man's dictatorship mindset. He he runs things even though you're paying everything. You're paying all the bills. I ain't even about to go there, you know. But, <laughs> but it's just something about having a man. Your freedom isn't as broad as it can be when you're single you can do more you don't have to worry about how somebody else is going to feel if you do this if you do that you can experience multiple different personalities on a daily basis by just dating different people you don't have to do the same person every day and all the resentment builds up from that person over years and trying to move on from that was still feeling some type of way about that and Y'all still going through little tit for tat things. And how did a man, as much as females be wanting one, I mean, they're cool to date, but most men, not all men, because I do love my black men, don't get it twisted. But but it's just like being with a man sometimes takes away from you as a woman, even your dreams. If you don't have the type of man that will support your dreams, you literally have to find some type of an outlet to do what you love like create whatever your dream is like my outlet is youtube i'm an editor and i'm an actor i have another youtube channel that's not faceless that i express my acting side of things my more that's my that's how i express myself through acting through editing videos and youtube is my outlet for that if i didn't have youtube I'd be going crazy in this relationship because it's mostly about building his rap career and that's what we've been doing since we've been together but now finally I have something that I can do for me and a lot of women go through this where they put their man's dreams before theirs and you know that's just gonna make me miserable if I'm not doing what I want to do for me so starting YouTube would be a perfect outlet if you're into like creating things Talking about whatever you want to talk about, that's an outlet alone. Hello? Like, just letting it all out. I don't have anybody who I can talk to about pretty privileged things, pretty girl issues and stuff. I don't have that except for YouTube, except for y'all. I can't talk to people in real life about these things because they think I'm, you know how it is. They all think you're, oh, what are you? complaining about you ain't got nothing to complain about you should you this you that but with y'all y'all understand so yeah start a youtube channel if you need an outlet away from you away from your man even for you know what i'm saying even for a little bit i'm trying to tell you it's it's an outlet for real i'm in the car right now recording this video before i go in the house because i just got off of work so because this you know they don't know about my youtube this is an anonymous channel for everyone Nobody knows who I am on this channel unless you're, you care enough to figure it out somehow. But my people in my real life don't even know this channel exists. So, yeah, that's all I really wanted to get on here and say. Like, we trigger people's emotions in all kinds of ways. We trigger everybody's emotions, it seems like. But that's just what beautiful things do. Beautiful is feminine. Feminine energy attracts. It's an attractive energy. That's just what we do. We can't help it. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for listening.